Good morning and welcome to Blessed Community Church. My name is Linda and I'm delighted to welcome you here today. If it could be that you're one of our regulars or you're tuning in from another part of the UK or another nation around the world or you are simply visiting this morning, you are really welcome to join us. And very shortly, we're going to be led in some sung worship by Luke Hamlin. Now, we're dedicating a little bit longer this week in comparison to previous weeks. Uh, regarding worship and the words will come up on screen so that you and I can join in at home. So we want to really praise and worship our God this morning. And then we changed our plans with our existing series that we were going to start and we have invited Steve Clifford to come and share with us this morning. Now Steve is an advisor at Bless, he's a really good friend, he's a wise man and in his role as being the General Director of the Evangelical Alliance, which he retired from last year, he undertook and, and achieved incredible work, particularly in listening and working with black majority churches and leaders up and down this nation. And I want to recommend a brilliant book called The Impossible Dream. Uh, it's put to, been put together by Steve and Yemi, another national church leader. Um, and there's so much wisdom in this book in terms of developing relationships, valuing people, uh, leadership, uh, team building exercises, worshiping as one, making Jesus known. And it's a really insightful and helpful book. So I really want to recommend this to you and uh, his wisdom in terms of what he's going to be sharing from today. Um, and I just want to say that as a leadership and as a church community, um, we absolutely do not see this focus this week as being a one hit wonder whereby with what has happened, the awful death, the murder of George Floyd, and we pray for his family and friends, we pray for the nations of the world. This is not for us a one-hit wonder jumping on the bandwagon uh, of what is happening in terms of a movement across social media and across the world of highlighting how um, absolutely wrong racism is. We are committed to ongoing conversations and dialogue and I've been in conversations this week with other friends and colleagues from our network, outside of our network, nationally um, because there's a responsibility for us to not remain silent but to explore what could be our a meaningful, uh, God-filled response at this time and how can we pray. So I encourage you as we listen to Steve is he will give us some helpful pointers and as we conclude in prayer, would the Holy Spirit open our minds and our hearts to the whisper and the call of how God values us. Each and every one of us, he values us. May we be champions of a united church, not a uniform church, but a united church with all its beauty and all its diversity. So I pray as we uh, uh, praise and worship, Luke is gonna pray for us as we hear from Steve. Let us be open to the Holy Spirit speaking to us directly. Good morning everybody, it's great to be able to worship together today and before we sing I'd love us just to take a few moments and be still. You might want to close your eyes, you might want to put your hands out in front of you as we rest with the Lord together. Jesus we invite you to have your way amongst us today. As we bring to you all that's going on in our heads and our hearts. We choose to seek your face. We say, Holy Spirit, would you breathe on us afresh? We worship you, Lord. Lord, we seek your face, 
your spirit, truth, and grace, and breathe on us, oh spirit, breathe on us, and be exalted, be exalted. In 
in our lungs So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath, yeah In our lungs, oh So we pour out our praise To you only, yeah Oh, we pour out our Give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, yeah, you restore every heart that is broken. Oh, and great are you.
I will not be shaken, no. I will not be shaken, oh. You are our firm foundation, Jesus, yeah. You are our firm foundation, oh. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. So Jesus, as we seek your face today, as we look to all you have to say to us, would you challenge us? Would you change us? Would you shape and mold us more and more into the likeness of your son, into all that you would have us be? We ask it for your kingdom, and for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Steve Clifford and Blessed Community Church is my church. This morning we are taking the unusual step of addressing a very shocking and painful event that has hit the headlines over the last few days. Sometimes events take place which are so serious, so challenging to our gospel and to biblical truth that the church cannot remain silent. The death of George Floyd is for me and for the leadership of Blessed Community Church one of those incidents. This morning we're going to open God's word. We're going to ask God to speak to us, us through his word and help us to respond to the challenges associated with the death of George Floyd. Would you pray with me? Lord, this morning we open ourselves to you and we open ourselves to your word. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to us. Enable us to hear not just from the speaker, but from yourself. And in the light of hearing from you, we might be able to respond better to the challenge that we are facing in our world at this time. If you've got your Bibles with you, why don't you turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. In verse 26 and verse 27, the Bible speaks like this. Then God said, let us make mankind or humankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image in the image of God he created them male and female he created them George Floyd was made in the image of God despite George Floyd pleading with the officer that he couldn't breathe and the small crowd that surrounded the incident on that American street on that particular day, pleading with the officers that were there in this incident to take the pleads of George Floyd seriously, after eight minutes, with the knee upon his neck restraining George, we know that that man died. George Floyd, made in the image of God, killed by a white policeman. Sadly, that policeman was also made in the image 
of God. But he failed to understand his responsibility as a image bearer. All this was filmed by members of the crowd and that video has gone around the world. It's been broadcast in so many different settings and the video, well, when I saw it for the very first time, I came to the conclusion that that video was the most painful video that I have ever seen. Here was a man dying before my very eyes. This wasn't Hollywood. This wasn't make-believe. This was for real. What was even more shocking, of course, was that the white policeman was there and should have been protecting George Floyd. He was a man in authority. His responsibility was to care for George Floyd, not to kill him. And we know that the impact of this death has been incredible, not just across the United States, but across so many cities around the world. The final words of Mr. Floyd echo in our ears. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And of course, those words resonate again with the creation story, the creation narrative. In chapter 2, verse 7, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. George Floyd, image bearer, had his breath taken away. In a sense, the breath of God that had been breathed into George Floyd, Floyd that had been breathed into humanity, was taken away from him. I want us to address two questions this morning. Firstly, why is this serious? And secondly, what should our response be? Why is this serious? Well, a man's died. A family have lost a husband, a father, a son. Most deaths, whenever they take place, are a, are a result and, and, and result in great grief and sadness. And, and it's important this morning that we grieve with the family of George Floyd. But of course, sadly, the circumstances of his death are even more serious. This is not one incident, one isolated incident. No, this is a, a stands among a list of similar deaths that have taken place in police custody. The incident, of course, is so shocking, so graphic, because it epitomises a fundamental issue that society is facing. This is racism. This is murder. This is injustice, and the Bible stands against injustice, and we must stand against injustice wherever we see it. Of course, what was particularly shocking is I know that that incident, that kind of incident, wouldn't happen to me. But I also know that it could happen to friends of mine. It could happen to Yemi. It could happen to Joel. It could happen to Agu. It could happen to Ben. It could happen to Les. It could happen to Israel. Friends of mine. It couldn't happen to me because I'm white. And sadly, it could happen to them because of the colour of their skin. It could happen to members of my family, brothers and sisters in Christ, simply because they've got the wrong colour of skin. And please, please, let's not write this off by saying, well, somehow this is an American problem. It's not ours. We in the UK have our own issues to face with racism. We have our own incidents of death in police custody. We have our own miscarriages of justice. Our prisons are disproportionately filled with ethnic minority and particularly black young men. 
Our mental health institutions continue to struggle with caring for the black and ethnic minority uh, patients. And we have our own far-right group with their insipid racist rhetoric. Hey, this isn't just a North American problem. This is a Western European problem. You know, travelling around London for decades, I have never been stopped and searched. But some of my friends, that's not been their experience. They have been. And for some, it's been on a regular basis. Let's also recognise that as a church, we face our own challenges in this area. We have so much to learn. Pastor Yemi and myself wrote the book, The Impossible Dream. It was, in, it was mentioned by way of introduction to this video clip. The Impossible Dream addresses some of the challenges we as a church in the United Kingdom are facing as we endeavour to express a unity which crosses all ethnic divides within our communities. So bless. And maybe if you're a guest listening in on, on bless this morning, I hope you recognise this as serious. I hope you understand why we're taking this morning to focus on this particular issue. And I want to suggest there are four responses that we can make to the death of George Floyd. George made in the image of God, an image bearer. Firstly, I want to suggest we need to examine ourselves, examine our own hearts. And I particularly speak to us white Christians, but not exclusively so. How easy it is for racism to find its home, perhaps in humour, perhaps in stereotyping, perhaps in an attitude which marginalises people and in somehow makes them other. We need God's help, perhaps the help of some of our friends to help us to see and to recognise that within ourselves. And if we recognise it in ourselves, the call is that we should repent. Secondly, well, we, I think we need to be prepared to listen and to learn. And again, particularly to us white Christians, I want to suggest it's a time for us to humble ourselves, to listen to learn from those who have been exposed to racism throughout their lives. Over the last 10 years, I feel I've been on a crash course, learning something of the experience of brothers and sisters from other ethnic backgrounds to my own and their experience living here in the United Kingdom. And so perhaps this is an opportunity to ask some questions of our friends. Hey, I, I hope... We have some friends that are of a different ethnicity to ourselves. And if we have, well, if we haven't, maybe we should make some friends. But if we have, hey, why not get alongside? And not rushing it, but taking our time. Ask them to share some of their experiences. And for us to learn and be humbled and to identify with them in the pain that they've experienced. Thirdly. This is a time when we can't stay silent. It's important that we are heard and that we are identified. And again, for us as white Christians, you know, sometimes if we stay silent, it can seem as if, well, it's not all that important that we don't really care. And it's important that we do care and we make sure that people know that it's important. And so perhaps in a conversation, whether it, and it comes up at work, in, in our places of education, in our neighbourhood, among our family, among our friends, and somebody raises the issue, hey, maybe we could just make a comment and we say, you know what, that isn't right, that's wrong, that's racist. 
And maybe in our social media engagement, we could put forward some, some posts, some blogs or, or some articles where we nail our colours to the mast and make clear that we don't agree with racism. It's important that we don't stay silent. And then finally, we must pray. This is a spiritual battle. Over the last 10 years, I've come to the conviction that this is one of the greatest battles that we need to face here in our own country and indeed in the context of the church. This is a spiritual battle. Satan hates unity. He wants to divide us and he particularly wants us to divide us along racial divides. And so this is a time for us to pray. We are a people who believe in the power of prayer. We believe that God answers prayer. And so let's stand together and let's pray for change in our society. In our society here in the UK as well as across the pond in the United States. Across Europe as well as in so many different parts of the world. Let's pray that those racial divides will be broken down and the image bearers will find themselves and respect each other as people made in the image of God. So let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your incredible love and how you have created us all in your image. That is just so beautiful and so powerful. We thank you for all we've heard Steve share this morning. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, into our minds, into our thinking, into our hearts. Father, into situations where we find ourselves, that Lord, would you enable us to be a people of peace? Would you enable us to be courageous, to explore our own attitudes, to explore our own fears, our misunderstandings, our own prejudices? Lord, would you root out in us all forms of prejudice and racism? Lord, we desire to be a people who honour you, who and understand that, that you desire us to be united, not uniform, not the same, but united. So Lord, enable us to listen, help us to learn from one another. So we pray for ourselves, come and touch us by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Father, where there have been specific situations of our brothers and sisters who have experienced direct racism, God, would you come and cause your healing to come, that Lord, would you come and breathe afresh of your love. And Father, we pray that as we open up and have these conversations, as they are ongoing, Lord, would that also be part of the healing process. We pray for our nation and we pray for other nations. That God, would you root out systemic racism? Father, would you enable us to be light carriers? Would you help us to play our part? We pray for our governments. We pray for our institutions. We pray for our police forces. That Lord, thank you for some of the images that some of us would have seen of some of the police force in America actually on their knees. And Lord, that, that, that act of, of humbling themselves because of the recognition of the atrocity that has taken place, but not this once, but again and again. Lord, would this be a time in our lifetime where change happens, where lessons can be learned from history. Lord, we apologize. We are sorry for our history, where our nation has been part and had its part to play in racism internationally. God, we cry out to you for reconciliation. Would hope arise? We pray, Father, for the family of George Floyd and his friends, that, Lord, would hope arise? Would this death not be in vain? So, Father God, as we are attentive to your spirit, we thank you, Father, for your now word. Help us to be people of peace who will act. And Lord, it starts with us. So we just invite you, Holy Spirit, 
into our lives, into our churches. Would you root out, Father, all forms of racism in Jesus' name and enable us to love one another and learn from each other, which is your design. This we pray in Jesus' precious name. And all the people said, Amen. Thank you so much for joining us, particularly this week. Thank you to Steve. I think we will all agree that was a timely and powerful message. So thank you so much, Steve, for sharing with us this morning. Now, we're going to have a Zoom call now for those who'd like to follow up further and chat. You are really welcome. So just hit on the link below and that will give you the details to come and join us. If you would like to reflect on all the things that we focused on this morning and, and you still like to keep up to date with us as a church and you still haven't subscribed, then again, hit the button below and we will make sure we keep you up to date with all that's happening in the life of Bless. And finally, we are so thrilled to have another evening tonight of live worship led by Josh and Alice. We're going to have some creative content in there also. So we'd like to invite you to come and join us six until seven o'clock tonight. Again, click on the link below and that will give you all the information you need. So bless you. Have a really good rest of your day. Have a really good week. Uh, and we pray God's blessing on us all.